from sickness, redeem from death, redeem from sin. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it's your season to win. Take your healing, take your freedom, take your favor. Give the Lord a shot. In the name of Jesus, Father, we rejoice that we have the privilege to humbly and respectfully come before your holy word. Thank you that you live in us by your spirit. Thank you that the Holy Ghost in us guides us into all the truth concerning your word. And we ask that as we study your word this morning, revelation knowledge is gifted everyone under the sound of my voice. But in St. Luke's are destroyed, whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. And I decree that your people are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. Thank you, Father, that by the end of the service today, we'll all be the better for it. We give you praise, glory, and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. Glory to God forevermore. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our feet together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God is my nature i do not struggle to do the world i do the world naturally therefore today i will understand the word of his grace i will be built up by the end of this service i will never be the same never ever be the same again in jesus name and every believer says a powerful amen we well, want to welcome everybody connected to this service this morning by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. And we're so glad to welcome all of you brothers and sisters on social media, the entire online. And I also want to welcome the whole Aquaibom State community connected by way of Comfort FM, XL FM, Radio Aquaibom, You Know You FM, Heritage FM, and Inspiration FM. Hey, brothers and sisters in Aquaibom, do me a favor, call a friend, a family member, ask them to tune to this radio station right now life is flowing through the airwaves our social media community like you've always done on a very special service like today's i'd like you to help me share the video share with all the people on your group tag some people create watch parties and of course help me make sure the video goes viral put them on monogram telegram whatsapp groups let's get the word of his grace to the entire blue marble planet and it's a joy to have all of you connected to this service. All our campuses around the world, what a joy and an honor to have every one of you connected. And if today is your first time of hooking to our service live, hey guys, fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be an exciting adventure in the word of his grace. Glory to God forevermore. All right, everybody in the building, are you excited to be here this morning? Whoa, glory. Let's give the Lord a shout, everybody. Glory. Amen. And today, incidentally, is Easter. The whole world is standing at attention to acknowledge and recognize that there was a day when salvation and the free favors of God abounded to mankind. I know some people say, but are we supposed to be celebrating Easter? Well, get the point. The point is not about Easter now. The point is not about Easter. The point is that the world today 
stands at attention in recognition of a day when jesus died he was buried and rose triumphantly at least if not for anything today is one day you are sure all churches in the world will preach about the dead burial and resurrection all churches in the world because there's nothing else to preach on a day like today so today we have some resemblance of the unity of faith in the preaching of the gospel what a joy to have everybody here all right, grab your pen, your notebook, and your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word of his grace. We've been examining the miraculous in the last few days, the miraculous, and this morning we're still continuing with miracles and how does God do it. We're going to examine how does God do miracles. How does God carry out the miraculous. John chapter 1 verse 1, the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god miracles are in christianity and there are some things to take note of on the miraculous jesus was even called a miracle worker in john chapter 1 verse 1 he tells us in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the word logos logos is used three times because that's the essence of what he is saying logos is used for a message a speech a thought or an idea the word logos the word logic logic logos or god's thinking pattern is used for a thought an idea or it is also used for a message or a speech obviously the logos here is god in man god in man and of course that's the message in this context of scripture and it says this was in the beginning with god that is the message of god in man was with god in the beginning and he says the word was is the greek word emi emi the word was and if i was to translate that in today's language i will say the word is in the beginning is the word the word is with god and the word is god because the word emi emi in the greek means to exist you can use it for a past tense or you can also use it in the present tense I will choose to use the present tense if I was the one translating because it is a continual word. But then the King James Version chose to use the past tense. Then he now says the word or the message. In other words, the incarnation of Christ is God's message. The incarnation of Christ is God's message. He says in him was life. And the life was the light of men. In other words, there's illumination in the world. Look at that John chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. John chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not look at the things that are in the trail of the world the message light life then it says this light and life overshadows darkness this life and light overshadows darkness look at verse 9 of the same john chapter 1 john chapter 1 verse number 9 that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world he calls him the true light look at verse 10 to 12 glory to god he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not next verse he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name please notice something there as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god the word technon like children 
Then he says, as many as believe in his name. Verse 10, he says, the world did not know him. Then verse 11 says, the world did not receive him. All right? So verse 10, the world did not know him. Verse 11, the world did not receive him because to receive him, you must know him. Then he tells you how he is received. He is received by faith. Look at verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That's God. Now, the word there should be who was born because he's talking about God. Then verse 14, of course, explains verse 13. Look at verse 14 of John chapter 1. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the word became, the word became flesh. It's the Greek word genomai, which means the word existed as flesh. The word existed because the word became is genomai. It means to exist. Meaning the message, the light, the life of God now exists in the flesh. It now exists. The word, the message, the life, the light now took up residence in the flesh. All right. The word became flesh and dwelt. The word to dwell there is the word skinu in the Greek. S K E N O O. Skinu. Taken from the word skinny. S K E N E. Used for a house or a tent. Used for a house or a tent. Actually, it is the transliteration of the Hebrew word used for tabernacle. Tabernacle. In other words, he says, what the Jews looked for in a house, what the Jews looked for in a tabernacle, just came. In other words, what they sought for year to year, what they were worshipping with animal sacrifice. He says, this is it. This is it. It dwells it took up residence among us. In other words, you will see in Christ the temple that they built. That is God's tabernacle literally in a man. In other words, when you look at Jesus, that's the temple of God. That's why in John chapter 2 verse 19, John chapter 2 verse 19 to 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will thou rear it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. In other words, Jesus is saying, In his three days and three nights, he will rise as the temple of God. In other words, he will raise up the tabernacle of God. But in this instance, it is still the incarnation. He says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he said, we beheld his glory. The word glory there is the word doxa, D-O-X-A. That is your resources or your splendor or your weight the word glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth the word monogenes or monogenua monogenes or monogenua m-o-n-o -O, monogenes g-e-n-e-s or monogenua m-o-n-o -O, mono Genua, G-E-N-U-A, alright, monogenes or mono simply means single or only or unique. The word mono means single or only or unique, which actually could mean begotten only of the father, begotten only of the father, used in John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, 
only begotten son. You will also see it again in John 3, 18. John chapter 3, verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned because, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Begotten son of God. You will also see that word only or single or unique in first john chapter 4 verse 9 first john chapter 4 verse 9 in this was manifested the love of god toward us because that god sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him his only begotten son and here what john said he said we beheld his glory and that's not a verse i can quote as abel damina because i didn't see the glory that they saw i was not physically there i'm not an eyewitness of what they saw that is they physically saw the glory of god a man by the name of moses had been told you cannot see my glory but what he actually was told is when you see my glory you will leave that's exactly the way it is translated in other words jesus is the tabernacle of the glory of god when we see the things he said and the things he did we see the glory of god so when we look into jesus we are looking into the glory of God because Jesus is the custodian of God's glory. Please stay with me. We see God in his magnificence in the incarnation of Christ. The incarnation is not a feeble like Peter said. The incarnation is a true life story of God in the earth and God in a man. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1 verse number 16. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse number 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we are eyewitnesses of his majesty he says we did not follow cunningly devised fables the word sophizo something you craft out like crafting a movie story he says no we didn't edit what we saw we didn't add to it we didn't subtract from it we didn't try to create an illusion the word fables is the word muthos a fanciful story like a movie to spice up the story he said when we made known unto you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ he says we were eyewitnesses of his majesty in other words we physically saw the majesty of god or we physically looked into the majesty of god and then you open the four gospels about to see his majesty and then you see that he never did harm to anybody in his majesty and glory he never hurt anybody he never wounded anybody you look into the four gospels to see what the glory is and you will not find anything in the glory of god but the graciousness of god i mean the graciousness of god because he further says of his fullness have we all received grace and for grace so the glory of god is in the grace of god the glory of God is in the grace of God. And Jesus is the embodiment of God's glory. The temple of God's glory. The carrier of God's glory. The tabernacle of God's glory. So the glory is in the grace of God. That's why David in all his kingly might and the military strength that he had. He said, for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever 
His mercy endured forever. He said he speaks of his glory in his temple. For the Lord is good and his mercy endured forever. When Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. I want to see your face. When Moses said, the glory of God is not in dominating someone or the glory of God is not coercing another or compelling one or creating evil on people. That's not the glory of God. God cannot do evil because he doesn't have the capacity to do evil. But the glory of God is in his graciousness. And John said, grace for grace. When Moses said to God, show me your glory. I want to see your face. God said to him, I will make my goodness pass before you. So the glory of God is the goodness of God manifest. Look at what John will say concerning God. John chapter 1 verse number 18. John chapter 1 verse 18. No man, actually the original is no one had seen God at any time. The only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father. He had declared him. He had declared him. Obviously, what he is referring to is physically seeing God at any time. Nobody has physically seen God before the incarnation. Jesus said something to buttress that fact. In John chapter 5 verse 37 to 38. John chapter 5, 37 and 38. And the father himself which has sent me had borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. You have never seen his voice. All right, now. So he says, in other words, we see God in his son, the only begotten of the father, which is in the bosom. The word bosom is the Greek word kolpos, K O L P O S. It means the chest. The chest, Jesus, is in the chest of the Father. It's used for someone who has an intimate view or has a very close relationship with another. It's the same word used in Luke 6, 38. Luke chapter 6, verse number 38. It says, running over shall men give into your bosom. In Luke 6, 38, it is used for you, yourself. Shall men give into your bosom means give to you. Then in Luke 16, 22, the rich man and Abraham, Abraham had Lazarus in his bosom in a very close relationship. That is, you saw Abraham and Lazarus together. Then in John chapter 13, verse 23, John chapter 13, verse 23, now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Used for John the beloved. How he rested on Jesus' chest. In other words, you saw them together. In Acts 27, 39, it is used for the inner chamber. Acts 27, 39. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into which they were minded if it were possible to thrust into the ship. So in other words, it is used for a part of something or something very intimate or close to it. So he says, the only begotten which is in the bosom of the father, he had declared him look at that word declared him the word declare means to explain or to give a first hand experience a witness or a testimony of a first hand 
experience or to explain something you have as your experience in other words deity is not christ information deity is christ experience deity is not christ information deity is christ experience he wasn't told about god he wasn't taught about god he has the experience of god in other words when jesus is speaking he is not speaking what he was told or what he is told he is speaking who he is and what he knows so he uses the word Ezegomai, Ezegomai. It is E X E G E O M A I. That's the word John uses, Ezegomai. It's used for saying a first hand experience, something you heard yourself, you saw yourself, your own story, or your own experience. You will see that word used in Luke 24 35. It is used for those folks who saw Jesus on the road to Emmaus. And they told what things were done in the way. And how he was known of them in breaking of bread. How they saw him experientially. Look at Acts chapter 10 verse 8. It is also used in Cornelius' story. Acts chapter 10 verse 8. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. All right. So this is used in Cornelius' story to declare, to say your own personal experience. You will see that word used in Acts chapter 15, verse number 12. Acts chapter 15, verse number 12. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them, declaring, declaring to say what you saw, to say what happened, to declare what miracles and wonders God had wrought. Look at Acts chapter 15 verse number 14. Acts chapter 15 verse number 14. Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Simeon had declared. So God had declared his own experience. His own part of the experience. Whenever the word exegomai is used, you are not told what somebody else did. You are told what you were involved in. So, when Jesus talks about God, he is not saying what he was told. He is saying what he was involved in. So, Jesus is not a messenger of God. He himself is the full expression of God. Acts chapter 21 verse 19. Acts chapter 21 verse 19. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. He declared, it's always used in what you are involved in. So, in talking about miracles, a very vital thing I want us to learn is to distinguish miracles from magic. To be able to distinguish miracles from magic. Because miracles are not magic and magic is not miracle. A miracle is not magic and magic is not miracle. There's a very clear difference but some of us need to know and it is going to help your prayer life as to how to receive i have seen magic firsthand as a young boy as a young boy i used to have a teacher of my primary school he liked me he just liked me as a young boy and then he used to take me to his house in the evenings and then he would sit me down and perform magic he could just bring a matchbox and then hold the matchbox, show me that the matchbox is empty, 
Then he will shake the mask box and it will turn into fire. Then he will grab the fire and it will turn back into a match box. And as a young boy, I'll go like, wow. I didn't know the difference. I didn't even know what that was. You know, but that was magic. I went to Dubai with my family on vacation some years ago. And then we decided to go on the Sahara, right in Dubai, into the Sahara. And then in course of experiencing the, the sand and all of those desert areas, they brought us to a place where we were to eat some food with the team that took us on that trip. And then that evening, we had some people come in to dance and sing, entertain us while we were eating. And there was a magician among them. This guy will just roll some cloth, roll some cloth and turn it into a ball of fire and then swallow it. And then when he swallows it, he will pull it out from his ear as a piece of cloth. I mean, real magic. You know, we saw all of that in Dubai. Now, sometimes we may think that's how miracles are. And that's what many people expect in church. That you just come to church, sit down, boom, and things are happening. Because you've been exposed to either magic or you've been exposed to some kind of divination sorcery or some diabolism that you just stand and people just watch people perform or you do things that just surprise people i heard of a man who went to south africa a friend of mine was sharing with me and he said to some producer in south africa on a radio station you know that he just came to advertise what he's capable of doing and then all of a sudden he will take an empty box open it and show the producer and then when he shows him the empty box he will close it and open it and it's full of American dollars. And he will take the dollars and spread them all over the radio station. And that it caused a lot of commotion in that radio station in Johannesburg, South Africa. A friend of mine was sharing with me. And he said somebody in the radio station called him and said, you need to come and see wonders. American dollars are being produced right here in the radio station. All right. Now that's magical. And many people think that is the way God operates. Now, you need to renew your mind. Maybe you have watched movies and seen magic and seen magical acts or even scientific fictions. So because of those ideas, you think that is how God's power operates or that is how God's power also works. If you had had that view in the old covenant, by the time Jesus came, it should have cleared your mind. You need to differentiate between magic and miracles. Look at Luke chapter 1, verse number 37. Luke chapter 1, verse number 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now hold on. There's a context that brought that discourse. You need to realize, not everything supernatural is of God. Not everything spectacular is of God. Notice what the angel said because this is the encounter of the incarnation where the angel visited Mary. In Luke chapter 1 verse 30, let's look at it. The angel was quoting from the Old Testament. And the angel said unto her, fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus next verse he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the lord god shall give unto him the throne of his father david he shall reign over the house of jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end now let me tell you what didn't happen what didn't happen is the angel didn't say hello mary you're pregnant the angel didn't say hello mary you're pregnant. And then Mary said, oh, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. That's not what happened at all. That's not what happened. The angel didn't tell her what already has happened with her. Look at verse 34 of Luke chapter 1. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be seen? I know not a man. This is not magic at all. And remember that the incarnation is the greatest miracle before the resurrection. 
Then look at verse 34 and 35. Verse 34 and 35. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come, shall, it has not come yet, it shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Underline the word, born of you. That holy child that shall be born of you. In other words, Mary had a part to play. Shall be born of you. Look at verse 36 and 37 of Luke chapter 1. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. The word all things, with God, all things are possible or nothing shall be impossible, is the word rema. That is, no word of God is void of ability. Remember, when the angel spoke to Mary, it was yet to happen. The angel said to her, no word of God lacks the ability. In other words, God always speaks before he does. God always speaks before he does he will speak then you will receive what god has spoken why because no word of god is void of ability that is what he meant that is nothing god has said will lack the ability to come to pass so god walks by his word God speaks, then he acts. He doesn't act, then speaks. Uh -uh. He speaks first. So the speakings of God precedes his doings. He speaks, then he acts. Remember, the angel said to Mary, no word of God lacks ability. When the angel said it, he was referring to the prophecies of the Old Testament. Look at verse 38 of Luke chapter 1. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Question. Did Mary have a part to play? Huh? Yes. The incarnation didn't just happen. A woman believed it and received it. God spoke via the angel from the prophetic scriptures. The woman believed it. The woman received it. Be it unto me. It wasn't forced on her. It wasn't magic. It wasn't mono. It was dual. He spoke. She believed. She received and she said. Be it unto me. According to your word. That is how God works. Look at Mark chapter 9 verse 21. And we read to verse 23. And he asked his father. How long is it? ago since this came unto him and he said of a child and of times it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him but if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us jesus said unto him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth if you can believe that's jesus now if you can believe he didn't say take it 
He didn't say it has happened. He said unto him, if you can believe. Because he is talking about receiving healing for his child who was oftentimes thrown into the fire. And Jesus said to him, look, I want you well, but you have to believe and receive for what I want for you to come to pass. Look at Mark chapter 10 verse 27. Mark chapter 10 verse 27. And Jesus looking upon them saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. He is talking about the kingdom of God and salvation. And how can the rich enter into the kingdom of God? Then he says, with God is possible. That is talking about those who trust God. Now, back to Mark chapter 9 verse 23 and 24 again. Mark chapter 9 23. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Faith means God convinces people before he acts. God convinces people before he acts. God does not dramatize. Mm -mm. There's no magic. He convinces people. That's why Jesus spent more time teaching. Then after teaching a lot, he now healed the sick. So he spent more time. And this is God's character. He spends more time informing us. And so when you find out people were healed in the ministry of Jesus, it was not automatic. He had taught and taught and taught then he now healed and healed that's the character of god he will convince you he will persuade you you know god does not override man's will we are talking about miracles by convincing men and men believing it also means men can say no I mean, I remember the guy who was on the wheelchair and I prayed for a number of people on the wheelchair and they, they got off their wheelchair and I got to this guy. He saw the others walking away from their wheelchairs and I prayed for him. He was looking at me. So I went close to him and I said, do you want to be healed? He said, no. I said, why? He said, if I get healed right now, I won't have government welfare package anymore. I don't want healing. I want the welfare package. You can't force him. Others were already getting off the wheelchairs and walking. But he said, no, I don't want to walk. Even though the power of God was all over that place, he resisted the power and the power cannot force itself on him. The healing power of God must be believed and received. God does not force people. Jesus will always ask you a question, then you will respond. He speaks, men hear, men believe, then men receive. You don't know God by signs and wonders. You know God primarily by what he says. You know God primarily by what he says. It's what he says that will let you know what he did. This is the reason why many do not know that there are many things they say God did which God never did. You know, I remember the day Jesus was going to a city and the people said they didn't want Jesus in their city. Let's read it. Luke chapter 9 verse 51. Luke chapter 9 verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. 
And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. The disciples were looking at them with the mind of, Jesus healed the sick. Jesus has power. How can you reject Jesus? And, Jesus, and they said to Jesus, you know what? We can release fire to destroy this village. And Jesus rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. They didn't go through that city. They changed direction and went through another village. God never forces you to be healed. If you want to be healed right now, you can get healed right now. But God is not going to force it on you. God has made healing available. You have to receive his word, believe his word, and receive what his word offers. That's very critical. That's very, very critical. I've seen a lot of sick people healed in my lifetime. I've seen the healing ministry operate through me, you know, over and over and over, both for my body and for other people. Okay, so that means God will not force himself into a city that says no. Look at Mark chapter 6 verse 3. Mark chapter 6 verse number 3. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon, and not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Next verse. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. And among his own kin and in his own house and he could dare do no mighty works save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them next verse and he marveled because of their unbelief and he went round about the villages teaching now when jesus is saying that a prophet is without honor in his own place is he making a final statement or is he only describing what could happen? Yeah, what could happen? Because that's not a final statement because later on his family was part of his ministry. That means the prophet eventually had honor among his people. So it was not a final statement that anywhere there's a prophet, he won't be accepted by his people. Oh no, my family accepted my ministry, believed in my ministry, my parents believed in my ministry until they passed on to be with Jesus and they honored and respected my ministry. Alright, so um, it doesn't mean every time you're called you will fight your family. My family honored me, you know, and that's it. But sometimes, you know, you know the way human beings are, in certain families, they could take you for granted. Now look at Mark chapter 6 verse 5 and 6. Mark chapter 6 verse 5 and 6. And he could dare do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Next verse. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. You know, if miracles required no human participation, he could have just said, watch me, watch me. But he now said, all right, they cannot receive because of unbelief. So he now went round about their villages teaching, teaching. Because the teaching of God's word is the cure for doubt, unbelief, and fear. And then eventually the miracles came because God can be patient. Look at that Mark 6, 12 and 13, verse 12 and 13. Because the miracles came and they went forth and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them so eventually the miracles came god is a patient god sometimes the delay in the power of god walking is how men receive and god is patient and jesus is patient jesus went round about the villages and he began to teach why because god is a convincing god in luke chapter 19 verse 44 Luke chapter 19, verse 44. 
and shall lay thee even with the ground and the children within thee and they shall not live in thee one stone upon another why because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation that word visitation is the word episcope e-p-i-s-k-o-p-e -E. it means to come to be with to come to look out to select and be among interestingly that was the prophecy in luke chapter 1 verse 68 put it up for me luke chapter 1 verse 68 blessed be the lord god of israel for he had visited and redeemed his people he has visited and redeemed his people that's the prophecy of zechariah look at that same luke chapter 1 verse 78 through the tender mercy of our god whereby the day spring from on high had visited us yet they did not know the time of this visitation he came unto his own and his own received him not john 1 11. that word means to look at yet they did not receive him in other words god cannot control what they did or what they didn't do see the idea that god does what he wants to do or whatever god wants to do is what god does or he did it whatever he wants to do if god was like that it will make god responsible even for sin and that's why you need to think through such statements god is not tyrannical he is not the kind of person who forces you it's like the funny exigencies on tithes and first fruits and seed where they say if you don't pay your tithe it will be tithe or tithes are demanded by god so whether you like it or not you if you don't pay to god you pay to satan you know it's, it's funny funny exigencies the most dangerous preachers are not those who preach legalism the most dangerous preachers are those who preach grace and then they have in the grace legalism and materialism engrafted in their sermons such preachers are subtle then he said god will demand it that's why he said sometime your child will be sick if you don't pay your tithe or if you don't pay your tithe your car will break down and when those things happen it is god taking the tithes <laughs> very funny right in john chapter 16 verse 8 he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will convince he will convince the word reproof he will convince the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment you need to realize that's what god does please hear this very carefully if i trust god for a need to be met if i am trusting god for a need to be met god will use men every time there's a need in your life god uses men whether money or things god has to use men because there's no food in heaven there are no cars in heaven and there are no houses in heaven so god will have to use men and sometimes there will be a delay when the men are not yielding to god look at it if god says i want to use mr a to meet the need of mr c and mr a refuses god will have to persuade 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 it could take time mr a refuses god will have to look for mr b and talk to mr b and eventually mr b yields so your need is met when there was a willing person to allow god to use them to meet your need that's why sometimes there's a delay in god meeting your needs because of the human factor involved in the meeting of needs and god can't force people god can't tell him well whether you like it or not you know that's not god god will have to woo somebody persuade the person talk to the person and get the person to give so god is not going to you know go to somebody's account take the money and put it in your account god doesn't pray like that he's not a criminal 
God will ask man to give to you. God will use man to give to you. Opportunities, businesses, jobs, contracts, whatever it is. God will have to find somebody willing to be used. And if he doesn't find, he will have to wait until there is a willing person to be used. Please pay attention. And sometimes there will be a delay when men are not yielding to God. Please, are you listening? There will be a delay when men are not yielding to God. That's why Jesus taught a lot to convince men to give to others. Because that's the way God does. When it comes to healing, for example, healing is supernatural. God deals with the sick and his power. When it comes to material things, there is always a third party. Who has what you need? The car you need, the house you need, the money you need, the job you need. It's in somebody's hand right now. It's not going to come from heaven. Whatever you need material is on earth in the custody of someone. There's always a third party who has what you need. And God is going to convince him and persuade him to do it. And he might say no. And sometimes when you go about preaching the gospel, God is moving in people to see who will say yes. The truth is, God will not just move someone against his will to do something for you. God is not going to force me to do what I don't want to do. I have to be willing to do it. Then when God talks to me, because I'm already willing to do it, I'll do it. And Jesus demonstrated that. That's why Jesus taught a lot about giving. He kept talking about giving to the poor, giving to meet the needs of others. Why was he teaching? Because he knows that the human will is very, very complicated. Sometimes people may not be willing. And somebody around them is dying of a need that they have the supplies for. Like some of you right now, you may have clothes you're no more using that could be a blessing to somebody in the church. Some clothes you have kept aside could be a blessing to somebody in the church. Some of you food, food, food that is abandoned in your house. Somebody right here in the service may be in need of that food right now. But because you didn't yield to God, instead of giving it to somebody, you trashed it. Same thing with clothes. Some of you, the clothes you've kept under your bed and they've been there for a long time, could be somebody's answer to prayer. But because you never yielded. Because many times we come to the service, miracles are happening all over the place. Even as I'm speaking right now, God is moving people right now in the service. And sometimes, because I sense that in the spirit right now, God is tearing up people right now. I get bo jakaya now. Egele ni mambro dozo kula na menge. Kegele ya mano shokolo dobrina kakarato sukele ya. Le grodo sakrana karoto sekile ne menge. Megia nagoro tusuka. Jekle de bri nagoro tusakalia. Thank you, Father. I'll do exactly that. He says, I meet the needs of my church using my church. I use my people to meet the needs of my people. And if my people will be willing to let themselves to be available, I will do great and mighty things among you. There will be no need because every need you have, there is somebody right here, saith God, that has exactly what you're looking for right now. But sometimes the people are not willing and they do not yield. So people come with needs and go with needs. When the supply for those needs was available, if only the people were willing to be willing to be used by me to meet the needs of others. You know. Oh yes. Thank you Lord. Some of you the contracts you're looking for, the jobs you're looking for. Some of you the connections you're looking for. There are people right here that have them. And some of you, the people that has them, are out there. So now you talk to God. God will have to move people and move people. And if the people resist God, there will be a delay. If the people are willing, then God will use them. And sometimes, as you keep praying, that's why when you pray for needs, you receive by faith. And you keep praising God. And you stay in patience and in faith. Because God will have to move people, move circumstances. Until the people are willing to go against everything that is contrary to meet the need of that other person. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
And right now, God is meeting needs. Even right here in this service, I sense an anointing of God moving all over the place. Those men will be the custodian of those things. And a man will not just find out his money is coming. No. Realize, when it comes to healing, God persuades the receiver. But when it comes to material things, there's a third party involvement. Did you get the difference? When it comes to healing, God engages the receiver directly. But when it comes to material things, there's a third party that God will have to move. A company, a government agency, an organization, a human being that God will have to walk through to get things to happen. See that? And that is why sometimes there are delays. And of course, sometimes people are just willing to be used by God. All right, but whichever way, if you stay in patience, eventually it will come. God will always appeal to men to meet the needs of other men. And sometimes, like I said, men will say no, and God cannot force them. Let me give you an illustration. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. The word favor there is the word charis, used for kindness. Was this word favor with man absolute? No. Was Jesus always accepted by men? No. Was it God that made Jesus not to be favored by men? No. Men choose not to favor him. So whatever men do, men can change. Men favored Jesus. After a time, they went against him. And I'm talking to some of you here who wonder, why is it that I never have favor? It's not because there's something wrong with you. It's just the way men are. It's just the way human beings are. Sometimes they could favor you and sometimes they could disfavor you. It's not because there's anything particularly wrong you have done. It's just the way the activities of men operate. You know, and that statement, Jesus found favor with God and man, was not absolute because there were times he never found favor with people. People went against him, people asked for him to be crucified. Whatever men do, men can change. The prophet said he was rejected of men, speaking of Jesus. So when Solomon says, When a man's ways pleased the Lord, he will make his enemies to be at peace with him, it's not an absolute statement. God will do what he will do and men can choose to like you or dislike you. So do not feel uncomfortable when men suddenly change towards you. It's not because you did something wrong. It's just within man's purview and will to do what he has done. Men can choose to just be used by God to be a blessing and they can choose not to. See that? And all you've got to do is stay with God Keep your heart on the Lord, trust him and stay in faith and just patiently be there declaring the word of the Lord. And then circumstances will continue to be arranged until there is a willing man to help you. But if you quit and you give up and you start speaking contrary, you abort the process that was set in motion for your need to be met. I believe in miracles. God wants to meet your needs supernaturally. He wants to open up floodgates of favor and increase for you. But men will have to be willing to let God's will concerning meeting your needs come to pass. And as I'm speaking to you right now, God is laying it in the hearts of people to favor you, to favor your business, to favor your career, to favor your job, and to favor your family. As I'm speaking right now, that favor is coming in your direction supernaturally. That favor is coming to your home right now supernaturally. As you're listening to the sound of my voice, that favor is on its way right now into your businesses and your careers. And hey, listen to me, great days of wealth and increase come your way because suddenly you will have ideas and men will be used to create an enabling environment to help your ideas flourish and help your ideas explode if you believe it can i have a powerful amen praise god i tell you so listen two things we've dealt with here number one god cannot force healing on you you must be willing to be healed God cannot force a miracle on you. You must believe God for a miracle and receive a miracle by faith. Jesus couldn't force people. He never did. That's not God's character. He allows you to be persuaded by his word. 
And then you receive his word and in faith, you take delivery of what God has provided. When we pray over you that are sick, you've got to receive your healing. You are not begging for it. God wants you healed. Jesus has done everything that is needed to be done to get you healed. But you have to receive it. He is not going to force you. He's not going to put it on you by force. You've got to be willing to receive it. And here, guys, I sense that healing power is in this building right now. Miracles are already in this place. I tell you, bodies and yokes are being destroyed right now as I'm speaking. And there are some of you, things are shifting in your jobs. Things are shifting in your place of work. Miracles are happening. Things are shifting. The power of God is suspending the course of nature and making the impossible take effect right now. The power of God is suspending the course of nature and causing systems and organizations to begin to favor you. Listen very carefully. The power of God is going into operation because when the word of faith is preached, the word of faith goes forth with the power of God. And there are creative miracles happening right now. You know, tumors are disappearing. Growths are melting out of your bodies right now. Thank you, Lord. I'd like you to stand up. Let's pray right now. I sense the healing power of God, the miracle power of God in this place right now. Thank you, Father. Lift up your hands and just close your eyes wherever you are. I'm going to pray for miracles miracles right now in this building on television on radio online get ready for miracles now listen carefully wherever you have a problem if it's a growth place your hand on the growth if it is a problem with your knee put your hand right hand on the knee if there's a problem with your eye touch your eyes if it's your hearing put your hand right into your ears wherever the problem is but if it is the whole of your body put your hands on your head i'm going to pray a miracle prayer we're going to have a lot of instant miracles right now all over this building we're going to have a lot of instant miracles online and on radio right now wherever you're hearing and on television let's pray father thank you that your power is available right now now sickness and infirmity out in the name of jesus out body be healed be healed nakota maraka tonoko growths melt out tumors melt out jakota naga bone disease heart disease liver and kidney conditions in the name of jesus be healed right now and i command miracles where you need replaced organs where you need new body parts where you need new organs to be created where you need organs to be restored in the name of jesus receive a miracle in the name of jesus ears be opened sight be restored bones be quickened be quickened i rebuke paralysis i rebuke paralysis go in the name of jesus now body body come alive come alive yeah that's the power of god that's the power of god at work in that body now at work in that body at work in that body god's power is at work in that body right now now begin to do what you couldn't do before you couldn't bend bend quickly something is happening in that body you couldn't move your leg move it if there was a growth in your body touch the place just touch where the growth was it disappeared and of course if you couldn't move your neck move it if you couldn't walk stand up now you can walk stand up you can walk right now whatever was wrong in your body do what you couldn't do before the power of god is moving right now in the name of jesus and those of you believing god for material supplies believing god for finances believing god for jobs believing god for employment in the name of jesus wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice receive a miracle receive 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 in the name of jesus circumstances and situations are commanded right now to walk in your favor receive it in the name of jesus thank you father oh glory to god hallelujah now listen to me all over the building check yourself miracles have happened all over this place and wherever you are if you've been healed in your body dr gabriel comfort with some of our pastors all the house pastors come up to the pulpit right now if you've been healed in your body you sense god's healing power is at work in your body you've been healed i'd like you to come forward quickly and if you're still there 
you know you are you have not yet received the manifestation we want to also pray one more prayer for you i'd like you to come forward quickly you need a miracle right now you need healing for your body i'd like you to come quickly dr gabriel and all the pastors line up quickly let's minister to the people you come forward quickly to the pulpit right now and we're going to lay hands on you and celebrate manifested victory all over this place it's miracle galore this morning glory keep coming keep coming online miracles are happening right where you are on radio on television god's power is flowing right now thank you lord jesus praise you father glory to god hallelujah in the name of jesus father we give you praise for testimonies miracles signs and wonders all over this building in jesus precious name and every believer says a powerful amen glory to god hallelujah Woo! i tell you it's a service this morning an exciting one on a day like today is a very special day because today is our partnership sunday partnership gives you an opportunity to support this ministry financially so that we can get this word on television radio to the ends of the earth through all the various platforms and today i want to thank you all our partners partners of this ministry and i'm going to pray for all of you partners first before we take your honor offering so wherever you are all partners in this building online on television i want to pray for all of you right now father in the name of jesus we pray for all of our partners and friends all over the world right here in the building in our campuses all our partners and friends all of those that are online partners and those that have decided to partner with us financially every month lord i decree right now that their needs are met supernaturally your needs are met supernaturally i command crooked paths be made straight valleys be exalted mountains be brought down and receive supernatural access supernatural favor supernatural relationships ideas concepts insights opportunities receive in the name of jesus and you satan take your hands off of our partners resources off of our partners finances you take your hands off their monies you take your hands off their jobs hey take your hands off in the name of jesus matola karota makila namanga egeboja kalanoma 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 egaloto marakita nakorotos kaladeba gogorodo shekelida maha egebaha an opportunity is opening up for somebody right now in the it industry and then i hear god say to me to tell there are about three of you that have been thinking of agriculture i hear god say to me to tell you don't play with it agriculture is the future so you position yourself quickly take steps take steps say of god and my help is available for you you take steps and my help is available for you saith god thank you father thank you lord jesus and i declare in the name of jesus for everyone that partners with this ministry your body is strong your body is healthy your entire family is kept by the power of god and we decree that you will continue to live on this earth with us and together we will see this gospel flood the earth as the water covers the sea and thank you father for all the partners and i decree that you are kept preserved strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man kept by the power of god thank you father for answered prayer in jesus precious name amen praise god forevermore now get out your honor offering quickly everybody your honor offering we want to give in honor of christ and all partners the banking details are on the screen where you redeem your partnership and those who want to be partners who just joined the prayer today you want to partner with this ministry all you need to do is shoot a mail to dr abel damina at yahoo.com indicating your interest to partner and we will send you all the information that you require to effectively partner with us the next 12 months bringing the word of god through your finances to touch lives all over the world and thank you for giving to the lord now lift up your honor offering we want to give in faith when you hear the word of god taught as a responsible child of god you honor the labor of god's word with an offering i'd like you to lift it up let's pray father thank you for everyone giving today we give in faith we give with joy and our offerings are a sweet smell before you and thank you for the opportunity to use our resources to honor your word and honor the labor of the teaching of your word in this ministry and i decree that everyone giving i declare your needs are met supernaturally and we thank you lord for favor and grace in jesus precious name and every believer says a powerful amen oh glory to god hey guys listen you don't want to miss the next service at 11 a.m gmt plus one i'm going to continue teaching 
on how God does miracles. It's so important. I'm going to continue so we can conclude what I'm teaching you and so you can get the full picture of what I'm communicating this morning. But we love you guys. Always a joy to serve you the grace of God. And I look forward to seeing all of you at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. Tell other people to hook up with us. It's Easter special service today. And we are talking about the miracle power of God, which Christianity actually is a miracle. Resurrection is a miracle. The death of Jesus and the resurrection is a miracle. The birth of Christ is a miracle. The forgiveness of sin is a miracle. You becoming a new man in Christ is a miracle. So Christianity is all about the miracle power of God to save a man from sin. We love you guys and I look forward to seeing you at 11 a.m. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Amen! Praise God! We trust that you have been blessed by this message. For these, all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damino, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.